Going to take a little break from the kayak I'm working on and get back to the camper because it's 50 degrees out today. Snow's melting pretty good. I think I could put my solar panel on. So I've got this uh, panel. Uh, I bought this uh, online. It's Grape Solar. It's a 100 or a 200 watt panel. So it's roughly two foot by four foot. It's actually, uh, no, it's actually, what is it? 28 by 61 and a half. So um, they've got these mounting holes in here, which are great, except they're in the wrong spot for me. Um, my camper has uh, the cross members at 24 inches. So we're gonna redrill those. Um, when you buy these, you can get a bracket kit to mount them and everything. Um, I wasn't sure exactly how I was gonna mount them. So I ended up making my own. I just took some aluminum angle, welded it up, made a Z out of it. So I will drill these out and put these exactly where I need them on the way there. But uh, should be pretty straightforward, I think. Let's see. Okay, so up on the roof, first thing we need to do here is figure out where the cross members are, because that's what we've got to mount to. Um, I'm assuming they're where these screws are showing right here, and that's probably true, but I just want to verify that. Yep, so that is holding true. Okay. So we know right there, right there. Those are 24 inches on center. So we're good there. So that's pretty much what I needed to know as far as location wise. I'm going to put them on this side and the reason I'm doing that is get down here where you can see. So that is the vent for the refrigerator. And what I want to do is um, that's where I'm going to pop through. I'm going to run those wires down that vent chase um, all the way down. And my electrical box is right next to that. So um, somewhere right above here in this location is where I'm going to put the penetration and we'll go straight down in. So I got to figure out exactly where that is, but we'll get that part soon. So here I've got that panel removed now. If you look up in here, you can see right where I need to come through. So we just need to come straight down into there. Um, I'll go from the inside too and make sure what that cabinet looks like, but we're coming right through into that. It's the cabinet right above the refrigerator. Okay, so as we go in the camper here, there's our fridge and we're gonna go right above. So that right there is that top piece that we were just looking at the bottom of from the outside. So we'll just come right through into there and it should work really nicely because I've got to chase all the way down to the bottom here. And then right next to that is my entire electrical system. So I'll pop down through that refrigeration cavity and then sideways into here. You can see right above that is the 12 volt and the 110 that goes to the fridge. So it'll pop through in that same spot and come right down to the control center. I'll be able to splice into my battery wires down here and then uh, put the controller in. So there's the first one installed. Got these all marked and drilled where they need to be. So I got those at this end, four feet down at that end, all the way along here. Um, Putting these together with all stainless steel hardware, uh, lock nuts, everything's gonna be locked in. And then uh, to fasten these down to the deck, I'm gonna be using these tech screws. These are what I used to fasten almost everything when I built the camper. Um, they're self-drilling, galvanized, they work really nicely and they zoom right into that uh, aluminum nicely too. Um, stainless and aluminum actually don't play together as well as galvanized, so, um, Try to limit where you you know where where water's going to be sitting against it and things, but you can hardly avoid it sometimes. 
Okay, so I've got the uh, panel up on the roof here, kind of laid out about where I want it. Got that foot right across from that, uh, where I had that screw or that cross member is. See the wires coming out from underneath, just kind of loose out here. Got plenty to reach where I need to go. This piece right here I also ordered. This is going to be uh, the access panel basically to get it through the roof. So it's got these waterproof fittings on it. And those cables just stick through. Those are waterproof fittings as well. And so this is going to sit right about like that. So now I just need to um, drill a hole through to get these, uh, these two cables through down um, into the camper. And then I'll start uh, fastening the solar panel at the top. Okay, I drilled myself a half inch hole. Just feeding these wires down through. And it's gonna be in that cabinet above the fridge there. And I'm gonna have to do, uh, I'm gonna really caulk this really heavy as strain the relief. I don't have a fitting that is gonna go on there, but that'll keep it from uh, chafing this wire over time. Basically, yeah, that'll go on there just like that. So that's gonna work pretty nice. And uh, by having this foot right here where these connectors are, I will be able to zip tie all this and uh, keep it from flopping around on me too. So I just put a nice big glob of that uh, self-leveling uh, roof caulk on here. And you can see it's just oozing through the hole. So I know I have enough. Did that on all four sides. Also just did that on this piece before I set it in. And once I'm done, I'll, I'll caulk around those the perimeter of those as well, just to seal it just in case. Now we just have to put those tech screws in there and that'll fasten that down. These are self-drilling, so you just basically run them until they stop. Just like that, that caulk smooshes up and seals all around them. Okay, that finishes everything up on the top side here. I'm not gonna connect these until I get everything done inside because basically right now it's producing electricity and I don't wanna get zapped. So that's the last connection you wanna make uh, once you get to that point. So everything's sealed up, ready to go. Just have to move to the inside now. So there's my wires poking through from the roof, coming down into this cabinet above the refrigerator. I've got this uh, charge controller that came, well, I ordered it, it came from Great Solar uh, to go with this panel that I have. And right here, that's where I'm gonna hook up those two that come from the roof, that's the solar. Then we've got two connectors here that go to the battery. Then they've got two more that say DC load. And it took me a long time to figure out where in the world those are supposed to go. Finally, I read in the directions and it said, if applicable, which means they're kind of optional. Um, they don't really need to be in there. What we're gonna do is we're gonna hook the battery into the common lines that go between the battery and the existing controller. So this beast down here. So the wires that already go from the battery to here will get interrupted and go up to that charge controller. And whichever one of these uh, feels like charging at the time will charge. So if the solar is charging, this unit here will will just say, oh, I guess I don't need to, I'll just wait. But if it's dark out and we're plugged in, this unit will take over and start charging the battery if needed. So it's pretty simple, but uh, just nowhere in the directions did it tell you anything like that. So um, I mine anyway, uh, because the way I'm set up, I don't need that DC load. That would be if you don't have that RV controller and you just, you know, you're running lights in a cabin or just totally off grid, you don't have anything else. Um, that's where you'd hook all your 12 volt lights into and things like that. The other thing I wanted to talk about this thing is, I think it's just butt ugly. It's just, it looks like it's from the 1920s to me. I don't know, it's ugly. So I'm just gonna bury that kind of up in this cabinet somewhere. I'm not sure exactly where I'm putting it yet. The wires that come down from the roof don't reach quite as far as I need them to anyway, so this is going to have to be somewhere, um, unless I put a splice in it or something. But what I did is I went out on the internet and 
found something that I think is a lot cooler looking. When this lights up, it's all blue lights and cool and everything. And I'm going to put that somewhere visible uh, really for that function right there. I want to know what the voltage is. Uh, and this thing's kind of cool too, is it has a uh, power switch on it. So it won't be drawing power unless I want it to. If I want to read the voltage, turn it on, turn it off when I don't want to. Okay, I got that, uh, that wire fed through. It's now into that vent cavity behind the fridge. Goes down into there from the roof. Comes into this next cabinet over. We are now right above the distribution center, the load center. And I'm gonna actually mount this thing in the back of this closet right here. And then from there, it's pretty much a straight shot down to all my wiring for my load center and my DC. So that's gonna make it pretty nice and easy. Easy access and I'll always be able to get to it. Show you too the battery I got here. Haven't used it yet, I hear good things about them. Um, when these things arrive, they are um, in a state of sleep, basically. And so what they do is they give you this little computer connector. And you stick it in right there, push the button on the end and it activates it. Uh, it takes it out of sleep mode and puts it into active mode. So it's all electronic in there. Okay, at this point I've got the, uh, the wires cut to the right length. Um, positive marked with an orange, which corresponds to the positive orange on here. Just happen to have some orange tape. So we're just going to pop this in there and tighten these up. Um, still have this disconnected at the roof. So there's, you know, there's nothing coming to this right now. These wires are just hanging off the side of the camper up upstairs. So we don't want to hook anything up on those final plugs on the roof until we've got all this connected here. Okay, so there's positive. Slide that up in there. So if these were live, uh, this thing would be live right now too. You'd actually see the, the power coming through it. So I'll just put some cable clips on that to hold it. And then we've got to run this one down to the battery. Okay, I've got the... Uh, wires hooked up going down toward the uh, distribution center here too. It will go for the battery. And I don't know if you uh, if we watched the videos when I built this but I made all these shelves removable just for this one purpose because it makes it a lot easier without those shelves in the way to get down and work on all this stuff because I can get back and, and work on my spaghetti of wiring here. So uh, I'll get those uh, figured out, figure out which wires I need to connect to with these. So a lot of you will have the same um, distribution center I do here. Um, or one very similar. So this is a uh, Progressive Dynamics PD4045KA. And with this, this will do either a um, lead acid battery which is what this one's set up to do, or it will also do lithium. So right here, you can see the difference here. So this, right now it's set up to what says WIZ. I have no idea what that means, but that's the lead acid setting. Uh, if you switch this jumper right here over, it will be for LI, lithium ion. Now, if you have a newer one of these units, there's gonna be a little switch right here that says lithium ion or lead acid. Um, you'll have that switch instead, but if you don't, this is your jumper. You just take this and jump this over to this next piece. It's pretty important to do, otherwise it will fry your new battery. Because I am going with the lithium. Okay, as you can see here, we've moved that jumper over to the lithium ion setting there. That's that little black square right there. Here's what I have so far. So we've got the wires coming into the controller from the solar panel. That is the black ones that loop around. 
Got the black and white ones that come down to the power distribution center here. And this is where it gets a little messy because I haven't cleaned these up yet, but okay, there's those two wires coming down. So if we follow the black, it comes in and it's hooking into the negative from the battery. So that's coming from the battery in the front of the camper. Got that connected in and then I've got that to a pigtail here that is going around and coming up into, oops, I guess you can see right here, getting up into uh, this right here. So there's a white one here and a black one. It's really hard to see the black one in here. That white one is common and that just runs back over here with all the other commons and connects together. So it's just your, your neutral bar or common, whatever you want to call it. Then the uh, positive coming down from the solar panel, doing the same sort of thing. So we've got the, the line here coming from the battery, coming up to the front. That's the one going to the solar controller. And then this one out, it's pigtailing and coming right into right here. So there's that red coming through that and that side on the positive. So I will get all those cleaned up and fastened down. Um, but I just wanted to show you how I connected everything together. Okay, from the access panel, I've got those wires um, run. They're the same wires I used before. Run up to this access panel up in front of the bed here. This is where the battery will be. So you can see I've got a vent in the floor there. That was for the old lead acid battery. The new one, I don't think lithium batteries need that at all. Um, but it's there, not gonna hurt anything. So anyway, got my red wire, got my black wire. Also have over here um, the, what they call the house wires, the house battery or whatever. So. It goes to the trailer brakes uh, in case anything goes wrong. And that has a uh, fuse to protect the system from the, the main trailer chassis too. So that all gets hooked into the battery as well once I get the battery back here. Man, you would not believe how much lighter this battery is than the other one. Getting the other one out just killed me. Um, I mean, this is still, light but it's not crazy heavy either very cool get all my wires out of the way here okay perfect gotta get hooked up so according to the manual that came with the battery, at this time we should plug in this, uh, this little indicator right here, and it's supposed to be a dim blue solid. So let's see what that looks like. Okay, and then you're supposed to press the button. And it should get brighter. Hey, look at that. So that indicates that it is off shelf mode now and it's in active mode. So then let's just put the probes on here and check. There's negative, positive. We've got 13.3, which is perfect. It's exactly what it should be doing right now. It'll charge up to about 14 once it's uh, set up and connected here. So that's cool. Next step is to connect the battery and, uh, and then we'll uh, see what the solar panels will do after that. Okay, back looking at the charge control, it's confirming that uh, 13 volts back there. So that's kind of cool. So it's just monitoring what the what the battery's doing right now. It says it's in, oh, it's hard to see, 12 volt mold, 13.1. And that's without the uh, uh, solar panels hooked up yet. So that panel's still unplugged up top. So I'm gonna go change that right now. All right, so back up top again here. These plugs are pretty much idiot proof. I mean, you can't plug that one into there. It can only go over here. It only goes in one way and snaps. Next one right here. That one's gonna go in and snap in there. 
to do one-handed. All right, so it's definitely a cloudy day right now, but let's just go see what's going on downstairs. Okay, this time I got a light on down here. It makes it a little easier to see everything. But yeah, it's working. Uh, it's indicating power going through there. I'm not really sure how to use all this stuff yet. Oh, it tells us 96%. That's good. 0, 0.0 amps. That must be how much it's drawing off it right now because I've got nothing going. Watt hours. Temperature. I think that tells me I've got 15 hours of battery. I don't know what that means. I'll have to look up all these different settings on here. But it's working, so that's pretty cool. I'm gonna go over here. Let's try just turning on just a light here and just see if that changed anything. Still doesn't show any amps being used, but that's just a little teeny LED, so maybe it just doesn't even show up. Well, I'll read the manual and figure it out, but at least we know it's charging. And that's good. Okay, so I didn't forget about this gizmo either. I still want to use this uh, just as something a little more handy to look at. Um, easier to see and nicer looking. So it sticks out like two and a half, three inches plus the plugs. It's it's kind of a little beast. Um, small this direction, but pretty deep. So what I think I'm going to do is probably build uh, maybe build a little box for it. And then I'll take that box and mount it on that back wall right by that outlet. And that way, um, that's right above the battery, very easy to get to and wire everything. Because this thing doesn't have to really hook up in, in, in anything special. There's not a lot of energy coming through. It's just tiny wires. Um, you know, I'll probably use like a number 12 just because I have a ton of it. But it really doesn't need that much. Um, and that'll just give me a better place to uh, to see everything. So. Yep, rambling on. Okay, I've got all the wires uh, fastened down so they'll be out of the way. Now I'm going to pop those shelves back in here and uh, move on to building that box for the other uh, indicator or for the other readout station, whatever you call that little thing. What I ended up doing was just building a real simple uh, box for it here. So it's just quarter inch plywood glued up and I've just got it uh, sized these radiuses and everything so everything just kind of fits snugly in there like that and I'll throw a couple screws on there I left the bottom open because that's where the wires are going to come up from uh, the battery will come up from below so you know when that's on that uh, platform you won't really see them so next all I have to do is, is paint this up and uh, fasten it in there and then we can wire this and install it. After I get the primer on, you can always see all these joints where it was glued together and everything. It never looks that great. So I just take some automotive uh, spot putty. This is the stuff you use like with Bondo. And I just put this on here. If I can get it to come out. And basically just rub it into those joints. And once that's in there, let that dry. And we'll sand that off, and that just kind of makes those joints just kind of disappear. So you end up sanding off most of what you just put on, but it does help it smooth out nicely. <laughs> like that. Just got to go get that mounted up now. 
All right, guys, it's a few weeks later, but I'm finally finished with this thing now. Um, it's a cloudy day today. We're still uh, producing like 22 volts out there. Just dropped 13, but 14, whatever. And I finally got this other panel in over here too. So this is my secondary. This is the one that I'll, I'll use, you know, most of the time just because it's easier to get to and everything. And if I flip that on, it's going to calibrate and it goes up to 14.4. So that's telling me exactly what the battery's got in it right now. And I like this one just because it's, it's out invisible. Um, it's got a 12 volt, you know, if I wanted to plug something in there. And it's got the USBs, which I can't get open right now. There we go. So you got two USBs in there as well. Um, the other one, the other unit has one USB on there as well too, but it's because I put that in the back of the closet, it's not going to be as useful as this one is. But I like this because I just shut it off when I don't need it. So it's not using any energy right now. So hopefully that helps you.